Talking about the Dow Classic MMC 64 interface cartridge. Wow, this is from a, a few years ago. Go ahead, Roger. Okay, can everybody hear me? No. Not at Roger, all. Microphone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Uh, the MMC 64. No, Roger. Closer to the mouth. Oh, that's <laughs> okay, uh, the MMC 64. No, Roger. Closer to the mouth. There you go. All right. Now I'm speaking. The MMC64 is an expansion port interface for the C64 and the 120. A that uses multimedia or secure digital <laughs> cards to load uh, files and uh, single file proofs. It was developed um, in 2005 by Oliver Acton and produced by individual computers. Okay. Uh, there we go. It can use FAT16 formatted cards of up to 4 gigabytes. Uh, only, it, you cannot use a high capacity SD card with it. Uh, it has flashable BIOS, built-in file, file browser that allows loading files using the cursor and trim keys. So, uh, there's a clock port uh, for expansions such as the RRNet network interface and the MP3 at 64 card, which can play MP3 files stored on the SD card. Uh, at the rear, I don't know if you can see it here, there's a pass-through port uh, that allows you to use it with regular cartridges. Uh, there are several plugins that allow for fun things like playing SID files, viewing images, displaying text, uh, files in any columns, writing D64 disk images to a real disk, and full frame rate character based animations uh, with audio if an MP3 at 64 is connected. So let's see what this can do. So we have F1 to start the file mode. Okay, and the system is a full system 64 is a folder where you put all your plugins for the MMC 64. You have to have that folder. These you create on the PC. Okay, and these are folders that I created on a PC. This is Robert's uh, MMC 64, by the way. Uh, you can create whatever folders you want with whatever headings. And if you go into one of them, this is audio files. These have a variety of audio files such as uh, SID and, well, SID and ROM, there's one PRG file. So, um, I guess we'll play this uh, raw file here. I don't know if we have any audio there, do we? Oh, um, let's try another file. You know, let's try a demo. Okay. So here's the juggler demo. Which crashed? Oh no. Crashed. Okay, try a different one then. Okay, you need to reset it. You need to reset the machine, Robert. Turn off, turn on. Okay. I don't know this machine, I don't have one. Okay, let's try one. Try one that works.
Okay, this one has to be reset. Thank you. Anyway, the BIOS and this are flashable, so you can you can upgrade the BIOS. This one has the latest version. Uh, I think it's, uh, what does it say? It's, it's like 1.0, I think. 1.10. Uh, what have we got? Games. Some Jeff Metro games here. Hover bumper. I wouldn't have a joystick plugged in, do we? Ah, it's still crashed. It crashed. Have we ever tried this on the SX64? No. Oh, yeah, we've only tried it on regular uh, C64s and 128s. We don't have a regular one set up right now. Hmm. Just keep on going. That's a photo I took at a car show um, and converted on a PC and into a Commodore format and uh, saved onto the SD card. And this is a plugin that lets you view it on the MMC64. I think this also has to be reset. With, um, well, that depends on the program that you actually run. Um, this one doesn't. It's possible to add one to it. Let's see. Video files. Okay, how about that? This is a test video file. There's audio with this if you have the MP3 at 64 add-on card for this, which Robert does, but unfortunately I broke it for him. Sorry about that, Robert. I will pay you back for that. Go. This should be working. I think maybe we should have tried it on a regular C64. <laughs> it's, it's not working with the SX. <laughs> the SX is a little bit different than the C64. Hmm. It's now the same. Oh, programs. Um, IFLI file viewer and a raw wave player. JPEG viewers. But you need some actual files to be able to use these. See. Terminal program CCGMS5. So if you have a a terminal program that you use quite often. It's convenient to have it on um, a card reader like this for your C64. This one's a single file program, so you can load it from this thing and not have it on the disk. Of course, uh, we don't have any, any uh, modem or anything hooked up to the so we can't log on to anything. Um, you can there's a couple ways you can use it with a disk that uh, has multi-file programs. Um, one is if you have files that where, where you load, say, one program and then it calls the rest of them, then uh, you can save that first program on here, like I did that uh, with no return, and then no return calls the rest of the, rest of the files. So it loads... Uh, somewhat faster because no return is instantly put into RAM and it just calls whatever other files it needs. Uh, or you can use uh, .dfi files and there's a dfi plugin with this that uh, can read dfi converted files and load them into memory. Mostly this is designed to work with uh, single file programs though. It can Oh, I guess I can use it. it can write files to disk. There's a D64 plugin that can uh, write your files to a real disk. Um, 
and let's see what else. Of course, there are more advanced uh, uh, cartridges that do the same thing and much more now. This is about 10 years old. Uh, but this is sort of a... Anyway, it's still pretty handy to have anyway. And this will work with an RAU as well. Uh, there's an, a plugin that allows you to dump RAU images uh, and save them to the disk and then write them back to the RAU when you boot up again. Uh, it's not quite as efficient as having an RAU that has a battery and, you know, so you can save your, uh, your files in it. But uh, it's a neat thing to be able to do. Questions? 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 Uh, I have a question. Does, does that one work? Can you put the modem on that, or not the modem, the uh, network card on that one? Yes, this will work.